Hello, and welcome to Rosie's Preserving School for Pressure Canning. Uh, it's a bit of a hot and humid day today, but uh, we're, we're going to pressure can nonetheless. And today we're going to be making what I would call British style baked beans. There's lots and lots of recipes for um, kind of quite complicated bean, rest, uh, jarred beans. But this is just a straightforward baked bean like we've all grown up on and know and love. So um, I will show you actually before we start the leaks from last week, uh, last time. Um, you remember I said I was going to do some leaks, although I'd found no instructions for them anywhere. And I thought I'd just show you how they turned out, which is perfectly leak-like. They just look perfectly normal. And I sh my next stage is then to use them in a soup or a casserole, or probably a casserole, but that won't be in the next week or so while it's so hot. But uh, it's interesting that they have pressure canned quite well, I think. I can't, I'm trying to show them to you without the shine from the, uh, from the lights on there. But um, yeah, so I'm happy with those. They've even stayed quite sort of, uh, quite a good colour. You never know with leeks, when you dehydrate them, they just look revolting. And uh, I know a lot of people um, do do that and they reconstitute quite well, but uh, they're a bit off-putting. Um, so I've got haricot beans here, uh, which is the standard baked bean bean. So I have rinsed them. And then I've got some other ingredients, quite a lot of other ingredients to flavour it. Now, I thought, I know, I'm not going to bother with all these other ingredients because most of them are in my passata. I'll just use the passata. <laughs> so I did that. And um, the beans that I did, again, I've got one to show you. The passata is too thick really because a lot of the uh, starch comes out of the beans and thickens the juice and so it ended up far too thick so I've got a separation in the jar of beanie bits in the bottom in a sort of a bean and passata juice and then some drier looking beans at the top. Now I opened one straight away and tried it and it was perfectly fine but I did have to put for a little jar like that about 500 mils of boiling water into the pan as well to get it anywhere near the consistency that you would expect from a baked bean. They tasted great and the sauce was great, except that it was very sharp. And this recipe has sugar in it, which of course the passata, when I make the passata, doesn't have sugar. So, um, I'm going to do it today with the all of the ingredients and we'll see how that works out in comparison. So I've got a pan here uh, on my other hob. I've got the pan on heating up and into my pan, I'm going to put, I think, all of the ingredients, the beans are rinsed, and they need to be divided evenly between the jars, which we'll do first, and then put the stock and all the remaining ingredients into the pan without the sugar. The sugar goes in in a moment when everything else is mixed. So I'm going to put that on to heat up. This is my veggie mite stock in here. Nothing, I was gonna say it's nothing special, but it is special, but you know what I mean? It's not a particular one, or it's not. I've used a veg the vegetarian one. I haven't used any kind of uh, chicken stock or anything like that. I'm going to refer to my list because the um, ingredients are for seven five hundred ml jars. So that's one liter of stock, two tablespoonfuls of tomato paste, 
Now, this is partly why I wanted to use the Passata, because I told myself I was never again going to buy any of these tubes of tomato paste or the little jars because you never use them up. You find them in the fridge door, you know, month, weeks, if not months later, and it um, they get wasted. So I could end up putting them into uh, ice cubes or something like that. Now, I'm using a teaspoon as a measure because I haven't brought any tablespoons over with me. They've somehow migrated to my home kitchen, which is annoying. So that's about two tablespoonfuls. Top on. And that's done with. The next thing is Worcestershire. Worcester sauce, Worcestershire sauce. Now I've got my own homemade here, but just use Worcestershire sauce out of the bottle. Again, it's two half half a tablespoonful, so not too much because it will turn it brown as well. You want to uh, keep the colour as much as possible. So I'll put a couple of teaspoonfuls in there. Lovely flavour. If you want to make your own. I have got a recipe somewhere online. It may be in my recipe site, maybe in my blog, but it's very easy to make with lemons. But you do need quite a summer's day when you can have all the doors and windows open because you have to cook it in the vinegar for quite a long time and it all gets in your throat and your eyes. And um, so, but it does make a great big batch, which um, then you don't have to make it again for about two or three years. <laughs> so half a teaspoonful of sea salt, not a huge amount. Same of ground black pepper. Half a teaspoonful. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And one tablespoonful of cider vinegar. Right. So we've got everything but the sugar. Gives that a bit of a stir. And as you can see, it's sort of baked bean, tin of baked beans colour. Very, very thin, but remember the starch in the beans. So I'm going to put that on to heat up while I divide my beans. Mine's quite a bit darker than yours, but I, I used um, vegetable stock that I'd canned myself so it might have had some darker vegging because I save all my peelings in the yeah, yeah. And make a stock. Well, it's it's more flavor than I mean it doesn't have to look the same it's just um it kind I, of mine already looks brown <laughs> but um it depends I think if you've got very um I don't want to say the word fussy, but if you've got children who will only eat Heinz beans and, you know, don't like the supermarket ones or the value ones or whatever. If that's the case and you need it to look as much like Heinz baked beans as you can. But uh, if if it's I say I don't mean just you, but if it's if, you, you know, it's all about flavor and how they taste, isn't it? So. Now then, uh, if somebody can divide 875 by seven for me, <laughs> which I meant to do, and then I could get the um, right amount of beans in the jar. You can't overfill them because it's, um, 
the beans do swell up. So they need to be kind of as per the recipe. 125. Right, zero. Use my ladle. 125 grams. If you want to do bigger jars, you can obviously um, multiply it out so you can uh, get the size of jar that you need. But for uh, for us at home, these are plenty. Because weirdly, since my um, chemotherapy, which is now about five years ago, it's one of the things I can't tolerate, baked beans, <laughs> although I do I I do um, enjoy them. You know, it's something that uh, you like to fall back on sometimes. And sometimes it's the only thing that goes with something else, you know, and it doesn't feel right having kind of straightforward vegetables with whatever it is. And toast, you know, broccoli on toast isn't quite the same, is it? <laughs> right. Zero my scales because I've got a different size jar on there. Now, out of my weighing out for seven 500 ml jars, I've just got those few beans left. So I think what I'm going to do is put them in this jar with the with those and then uh, with the extra liquid in there, it should be about right, I hope. And I'll, I won't do um, another. I won't do a seventh jar. I'll just do one bigger one, which will be OK with the um, timing and everything. All right, turn that off. I'm going to add the sugar now to the stock mixture, which I've got measured out in this little jar. Put that in. I've got soft brown sugar there because it's just easier to mix in and dissolve than demerara. Um, use either and just stir that until it's all nice and uh, dissolved. Right, 
apart from the, all the beans we did in, in lesson one, where it was just hot water being added, I think this has to be one of the easiest recipes, really. But it's probably going to prove to be one of the most useful over time. Just cook that together for a couple of minutes. My new induction hob can take two pans at the same time, so it can take a huge pan. So it's absolutely perfect for this. Yes, fantastic. Very, very excited. I'm about to get the instructions out to work out how to do it. <laughs> would you be, Would you be able to get two canners on there? Yeah, easily. Oh, now we now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think my husband would have a fit if I said I wanted another canner. <laughs> he wouldn't come the apocalypse, he'd be pleased at what you've got. <laughs> well, my, my canning has saved us, I'm telling you why we've been having this kitchen done. And yeah. that, that bean and sausage soup is yeah. far everybody's favourite. They, they, they've loved it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so there we go. Is your son home now for the summer? Is he at uni? No, my son's at home all the time. Oh, I thought he was away at uni. No, I've got one son that's um, much older and he's away, but we've got one that's with us. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all to the good. Um, yep. Right, this is now, you know, boiling away quite happily. Let me just check uh, the... Yeah, 75. Okay, put my book somewhere out of the way. And get my heat mat so I can put it down on the table. I don't want to be ladling over the edge of the cat over the hob, really. There we go. Good. So now I've just got to ladle this in. If there isn't uh, enough to fill them, I mean, it should be because that was the recipe, but I'll uh, just top up with um, water if there aren't. Let's go around. I won't fill them right up straight away. And when they're uh, processing, of course, the starch will come out of the beans and thicken the sauce. Uh, when you come to use them, if you don't think it's just as you like it, then you can use uh, something like, you know, a couple of teaspoons of corn flour mixed with some water to thicken them. But there should be enough um, natural starch from the beans themselves. You'll remember for when you made the beans before, all the different beans, they do have a very thick starchy base. Mm, the ladle hasn't appeared yet out of a box from oh. somewhere. So, mm. can you use a jug? Small. Actually, I'm just going to use a cup, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, be careful you don't burn yourself, but yeah. Mm. I'll use my um, milk, <laughs> milk warming jug. I'll have to be inventive today. Yeah, well, that's all to the good. Right.
Are you filling? Oh, sorry, I, I missed what you said. Are you filling just to the normal fill line? I will be, but I've I've tried to divide it out fairly evenly because oh, I've got this okay. bigger jar. Um, then going to top up with just plain water up to the headspace, the, the maximum fill line, which I'm just going to fetch now some extra water. And before I fill them right up to the top, the thing I'm going to do is de-bubble them while there's space to do it. Just going to give them a stir because the beans packed down in a lump at the bottom as you pour the water in. And being a really, well, it was a boiling liquid, it, they start to release some starch and they get sort of stuck together. So and make sure you do that before they get too happy with being in a group at the bottom. Same with these ones. Right, I'm going to fill up to the three centimeter, one inch line. And this big jar I'm doing, I, I need to fill it up because it doesn't do to sort of uh, pressure can things half full. But I'll watch it when I open it. It may need um, some help with being thickened a bit. Okay. So I've got my seals here. I've got my vinegar. Which is going on. Nothing sort of meaty or greasy to worry worry about. Help if I dipped it in the vinegar, not the jar of beans, wouldn't it? I know it seems a bit tedious doing this with the vinegar, but it really does help. Um, I I don't think I can't remember the last failed seal I had. So uh, and the vinegar in the canner, of course, <laughs> to save our jars going having that nasty white bloom. And there they are in their jar, um, ready to go in. They look authentic, even though they're not cooked yet. I mean, I don't know why I should be so fussed about trying to get them to be like a commercial product. But the fact remains that that is what people are used to. And that's what their expectation would be if you said, would you like some baked beans with that? Um, you know, so it's a bit of an odd one. But actually, I think baked beans are one product, one commercial product that doesn't get messed about with too much. And so let's face it, um, commercial production is all about profit. And so if they're not going to add in things that are going to make it more expensive. So and it's quite a simple product to produce. So.
my last one. Good. The thing is, is to try them. If you like them, is then to do a whole can of full. You know, go for it and uh, do it with a can of full, and then they're ready whenever you need them. And run around this way. Check the vent is okay. So close it up, turn it up, and I'm just going to clear the decks a bit. Okay. Right, it's a wait for the inevitable venting time. Um, what I would say is um, if you want to make some of the other types of beans which have got, you could make this basic bean, I would reduce, either increase the size of the jar with the same amount of beans or reduce the amount of beans. And you can then add in some bacon, sausage pieces, you know, anything you want really to make it into um, a kind of more of a meal in a jar. Uh, just be careful of the uh, capacity, you know, because the beans will swell up. And probably I would go with using a bigger jar and then you will have the same sort of um, tomato juice it's in, but with, um, you know, some added ingredients if you wanted to, whatever. Uh, appeals really um you wouldn't necessarily need to cook those things first up well probably just seal them in the pan like we did with the soup uh, and then mix them into the stock mix and fill the jars and i uh, finally the last thing is uh my book it's on the website now and i shall have some copies this week and our trisha's already ordered one so i'm going to be sending hers out this week and then and it's on amazon as well so that is uh 
what it looks like. And uh, I I hope you enjoy it, Tricia. You'll be getting yours this week. Lovely. So it looks like we're going to be venting. In the, oh, it's venting already, so I need to put my timer on. Okay, so I'm going to time for 10 minutes. And then I should be putting the weight on. And, uh, is it 75 minutes because they're the 500 mils? 500 mils, 75, 90 minutes for a 1,000. I, I really don't know why it's so long because it doesn't seem to me to be that riskier um, mm. contents. But beans are funny things, aren't they? You know, they, they have toxins if you don't prepare them properly. So... Um, yeah, that's the timing. Okay, I will see you anon. Have a good okay. Have a Thank you. And uh, we'll come back and do uh, ratatouille. Excellent. Good. Lovely. Good. Mm -hmm. So the canner, we've vented. We put the weight on. Ten pounds pressure. So two, two. Uh, the the base plate and one washer on the top for 10 pounds psi and then just coming up to the 10 pounds on the gauge and once it gets to the 10 pounds i'll start the timer now for the 500 ml 75 minutes and for the 500 ml jar and for the bigger jars they're um uh, 90 minutes so we're just up there now, so I'm going to put on um, my timer for 75 minutes. There we go, start that, and we'll come back when uh, the timer's up and the camera's depressurized. And I'm going to open it and we'll have a look and see what the beans look like in the jar. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. You can probably hear the silence. The canner is finished and it's decompressed. So I'm going to open it now and uh, we'll have a look at the beans. First thing is to take the weight off. So if I don't take it off and I take the lid off and turn it upside down, it will fall off. So I'm going to put that over there and then open the lid carefully away from your face. Let the steam out as much as possible. There we go. Quite hot still. Let's have a look. If I take my big jar out first, that will loosen up the rest. Says, oh. I just need to be taller. Do this. bubbling The last one. Oh, goodness. Mm. 
there. Probably, I don't know how it easily I can show you this. I don't want to tip it sideways particularly because uh, they're still bubbling away and uh, I don't want it to siphon. But uh, if I hold it up like that to the camera, you can see them in there. They look just like regular baked beans, which is the uh, object of the exercise. So I'll leave these to get cold now. I'll leave them overnight with their lids on. And then tomorrow I can take the lids off and check that they've sealed before labelling them and putting them away. Although I don't really think I need to label them. I don't think there's any doubt as to what they are. <laughs> so uh, I hope yours turn out as well. And uh, I'll see you again in two weeks for Ratatouille. Yum. <laughs>